August 1918. The great war that has ravaged Europe for over four years is drawing to its dramatic conclusion. All across the Western Front, Allied forces are preparing for one last push. A massive offensive designed to drive the Central Powers out of France, cripple their morale and end their appetite for war. Credited with forcing German leadership to sue for peace, this series of battles would become known as the Hundred Days Offensive. Earlier in the year, Germany had launched its most dedicated assault yet on the Allied lines, selecting the best men from each of its divisions to form elite stormtrooper units. Supported by a more efficient use of artillery, the stormtroopers made rapid gains in the largest seizure of ground by either side since 1914. However, the Allies had sold the Germans a lie, allowing them to overrun tactically worthless locations in exchange for holding on to key strategic infrastructures. As the dust settled and the logistically ill-equipped German forces ran out of steam, the Allies were still standing. As summer drew to a close, they made their move. The Germans, well aware of the dangers of an Allied counteroffensive, had spent the winter of 1916 preparing a position to contain any breakthrough from the West. Running for over 100 kilometers from Arras to Lafau, with extensive fortification and depth, the Hindenburg Line was the linchpin of the German defense. Where the Allied and German defensive plans differed was their attitude to losing ground. Months of daring small man raids by Allied forces, a tactic pioneered by the Australian Army, known as peaceful penetration, had seen German divisions losing ground without a fight, leading the Chief of Staff of the German Second Army to issue the directive that troops must fight, they must not give way at every opportunity and seek to avoid fighting. This meant that whereas the Allies had focused on holding key areas, the German Army, already vastly overextended, was trying to fight for every square foot of tactically pointless French soil. By hitting multiple areas at once, the Allies exploited this overextension of the German forces, and as units saw neighbouring areas being overrun, they were left with the choice of falling back or capture. Between the 2nd and 3rd of September, the northern portion of the Hindenburg Line was breached, forcing kilometres of the German front line back to avoid being cut off. A special mention must be made here for the role of tanks. Although they did play a part in the Hundred Days Offensive, the lumbering behemoths of World War I were a far cry from their successes. They could resist large amounts of firepower, but over rough ground, their low speed and lack of manoeuvrability were massive hindrances. Whilst they enjoy an almost mythical role in popular culture for turning the course of the war, the tank was far from realizing its true tactical potential. The Allied strategy of repeatedly hitting multiple areas of the German front continued to pay off, with the outlying pockets of resistance being pushed inexorably back towards the Hindenburg Line in a series of devastating losses for the German army. Every time reserves managed to make it to the battle, the Allies would switch their focus to a new area, consistently overwhelming the exhausted and numerically inferior defenders. Two weeks of retreat saw the bulk of the German army fallen back to the Hindenburg Line by mid-September, and for a brief period, it held. However, the superior numbers and production power of the Allies meant that it was only a matter of time before the line began to buckle and eventually collapse. By this point, German morale, already damaged by the failure of the spring offensive and the rapidity with which the Hindenburg line had been overwhelmed, was at rock bottom. Early October saw further punishing losses inflicted on defenders, and with no sign of a respite, a very real fear began to grow amongst the German leadership that they would be pushed all the way back to Germany itself. The Kaiser was informed by high command that the military situation was hopeless, and on the 3rd of October, Prince Maximilian of Baden was appointed the new German Chancellor, with the aim of negotiating an armistice. Whilst early Allied demands for the abdication of the Kaiser were rejected, it was only a matter of time. In the face of superior numbers, economic power, and ailing enthusiasm for war amongst the German military leadership, the outcome of the war was little more than a formality. The Allied plan had worked. Mid-October saw German forces ordered to withdraw from the Hindenburg Line to prevent further losses. The upcoming weeks would bear witness to the fall of the Kaiser's regime and the rise of a new German Republic in its place. Within a month, the war was over. <laughs>